Hello and welcome. Uh, I am Sergeant First Class Khan with the Special Operations Recruiting Battalion and the Warrant Officer Recruiting Company out here in beautiful Grafenbeer, Germany. And my guest today is uh, CW5 Foreman, and he is now a 255 Zulu. Yes. Uh, and sir, if you could share with us a little bit about your experience in your particular field set and how you feel about serving in your MS. So I've been a warrant now for almost 22 years, so I've run the gamut of signal uh, warrant officer experience from networking into service support and now as the senior signal guy here in, in Europe. Uh, and so it's pretty exciting. I love my job. Over the 22 years, I have not done the same signal job twice, which is pretty dynamic and, and a little bit unusual, but I love it because every single place I go, there's something new and dynamic for me to learn. And as somebody who loves lifetime learning, it's just exciting because I get to hit the ground, I get to research, I get to answer those command combat questions and the, the gaps that they have from a comms perspective and try to fill them either with stuff that's already out there or maybe a new and emerging technology or you know, I've worked with Special Operations Command because they get all the, you know, the cool toys sure. and you try to bring those into the conventional forces. So I, you know, as a signalier coming from the side of enlisted and then being a warrant, it was just a continuation of working hard and then being able to do what you just love day to day and, and really kind of taking the leash off a little bit and just letting me run to do those things that I need to do for the command. Sure, sir. Um, in terms of the day to day, um, for a new perspective uh, warrant officer coming into the cohort, mm -hmm. As a signal warrant, what can they expect to do on a day-to-day, -day, and how do those responsibilities grow over time? So depending on their MLS, so we've got the networking side, we've got the service support side, and now the cyber security side of the house. So those three MLSs assess at W1. Uh, it's going to look a little bit differently, but typically we, those guys are going to be at the tip of the spear. Uh, we typically try to get them into the BCTs uh, where you, to be a combat enabler for out there, so that's really what they can expect. And they're gonna be a low density population. Now, some of those will go into signal formations. <coughs> so that's good. so they're, they're gonna be a little bit different, so they're gonna be signal support for a, a specialized unit or whatever it might be, so they're gonna have a little bit more signal there. But you typically can expect that you're gonna be the signal warrant in that formation, either for networking services or cybersecurity, which is, it could be good and it could be bad, because you're going to have some long days and some long hours, uh, but that's what we pay you to do. <coughs> and uh, I, I feel your pain. And so it, it can be difficult but challenging because you own the signal stuff for that SIGO. You are the technician for the, that brigade formation, uh, ensuring that all their comms work. You have a great opportunity to mentor uh, not only NCOs, but also those young officers and kind of shape the way that those platoon leaders and young company commanders or troop commanders see warrant officers and how it will grow throughout their career and, and how we facilitate and become a combat multiplier out there on the force and, it's a, and enabling everything to happen right. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. I mean, you're gonna have some long, hard days, uh, but it's worth it for sure. Yes, I, love, sure. I mean, I love my days back in regiment and in, in field artillery infantry formations. It's great, great memories. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that insight. Mm -hmm. For a new applicant, for a new candidate that's seeking you out for a letter of recommendation, what are some of the key attributes you're looking for in that individual, sir? So obviously as a warrant, we're looking for that technical aspect first. So I'm going to look to make sure, one, that you just meet the base requirement uh, that my MOS has. So I won't get into particulars of that, but most of us as technicians, that's what we're gonna look at to make sure you meet those base requirements. Because if you don't meet those base requirements, then we're gonna go into a mentorship of time and say, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. Which actually happened to me when I went to a senior ward. They said, I want you to do X, Y, and Z before I do your letter, and we moved forward and did those things, obviously. So we, you know, that's a mentorship opportunity. Uh, and then I'm looking to see if they, what they've done to step it up a little bit. Do they have certifications that we're looking for that aren't necessarily required for a sessions, but makes their, their application stronger? 
and stronger as a technician? Uh, and do they have that passion for it because they're a lifetime learner and doing those kind of things? The other thing I look for is what are they doing outside of their MOS to improve the Army and the community? Uh, are they a leader? Because a lot of times we see warrants as just the tech, but really they're technical leaders. So are they, are they putting themselves out there in hard jobs as an NCO? You know, are they volunteering to do things as additional duties? Or maybe they're volatile, we don't know sometimes, but are they doing those extra things that looks at, I look at them as a leader. Uh, Sergeant so Morales Club. Sergeant Morales Club, yeah, Audie Murphy. Uh, they decided they, you know, they're gonna be, you know, the, the unit safety officer. Whatever it is, they're doing things outside their MOS that I see now as their, their true leaders. Are they doing stuff in their community? Uh, do they volunteer? Do they help? You know, are these things in their evaluations or are they got awards for it? Whatever it might be, I'm looking for those, those things that we typically don't look for in warrants, but it shows the dynamics of a leader. Uh, this is important because when it gets on the accessions board, uh, me as a signal guy, I know what I'm looking for for signal people. But when I look at uh, a logistician, I may not necessarily know that they meet all the technical expertise, but I can look at all the leadership traits on top of some of the little bit that I know about that technician to get a complete picture of that, that NCO. And I think that's the important thing. So we want to look at the holistic soldier. And I think a lot of times soldiers just or NCOs focus in on, I'm technically smart, but there's more to it than just that. Certainly. Uh, as a mentor in the cohort, uh, what is some critical advice you would give to uh, a potential candidate, sir? Take those hard jobs. <clears throat> Don't shy away from the hard jobs, because if you want to be a war, the hard jobs are coming. Whether you want them or not, they're coming. And so when we look at NCOs, who is stepping out ahead of their peers? Who's taking those hard jobs? Uh, the other thing that I always look for is, are they a lifetime learner? Uh, not just your PME, because everybody's going to have to hit those toll gates eventually if you want to get promoted. But <coughs> are, they, are they reading good books outside of the Army? Are they reading leadership things? Are they taking college courses? Now, a lot of MOSs require certain college classes. Ours requires English and math. Uh, some require a full bachelor's degree. Uh, very few, but some do. <clears throat> uh, you know, but that lifetime learning shows that you're critically thinking throughout your life reading good books, studying things, taking professional certifications, whatever it might be, I'm looking for that person that continues to look to improve themselves. Sure. Chief Foreman, thank you for the privilege of your time today, sir. Um, I really appreciate the insight. Uh, for those of you listening out there and, con and you know, considering a career as a signal warrant, uh, I tell you to go ahead and go warrant now. And again, as Chief Foreman said, don't shy away from the hard jobs. Uh, certainly seek them out. And once again, thank you so much for your time today, sir. Thank you for your time.